what is intelligence? This will probably open up a bunch of different opinions and answers. So the experts have boiled it down to the three basic types that make up intelligence as a whole. There are fluid intelligence, where one can detect meaningful patterns, grasp abstract concepts, and apply it all to problem solving. Crystallized intelligence. You might know it as book smarts, the stuff taught in classes and the dictionary. An emotional intelligence, being able to read people and yourself. When thinking about an intelligent individual, we tend to think of people who changed the world as we know it. We think of greatness and who isn't at least a little curious about whether there's a seed of that greatness within them. Let's look at some traits that may give you a clue. Number one, you understand how much you don't know. Ah, Socrates, so we meet again. Yes, the only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. The intelligent person is intelligent because they know things, but it follows that they wanna know more things. So they're very open and accepting that they really don't know everything, not even close. There's so much more out there. They understand that at times, they don't know what they don't know. If someone does the opposite, considering themselves more intelligent and proficient than they are, thus already knowing more than anyone else, they're blocking off the possibility of knowledge. If the blockage is extreme, it's known as the Dunning-Kruger effect, and we tend to see those individuals as exactly the opposite of intelligent. Number two, you are insatiably curious. Einstein knew this, and perhaps you felt this too. Hand in hand with knowing you don't know it all, it doesn't mean you're not doing your darndest to try to learn it all. The vastness of knowledge, the yet unlearned or yet undiscovered is the irresistible, compelling pool you're drawn to. You ask questions because you just need to know or have come up with an idea and go down the information rabbit hole to fill in all the blanks on how to realize it. Perhaps you observe others knowing they experience things completely different and are just itching to learn about them. Some explanations aren't enough for you. If someone says, this food is good for you, you have to know why. Hearing the person simply say over and over, it just is, drives you up the wall. In fact, Engaging in meaningful questions stimulates your mind, encouraging it to stay alert and think of other things that may branch from that question. New possibilities arise and thus new discoveries and new theorems. Curiosity has shaped our world. For those who say, but curiosity killed the cat, please remember that the whole quote is, curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. Number three, you are highly adaptable. You likely have made plans of some sort in your life, and like the rest of us, those plans often go awry. Let's face it, we live in a small state of chaos. The trait of the intelligent person is what happens when that plan goes sideways. While many get overwhelmed, freeze up, or run around aimlessly, the intelligent remains calm and lets their brain get to work. They understand that there's usually more than one pathway to get to a goal. They'll find or create another pathway. In other words, they adapt. It's been found that the behaviors that lend themselves to adaptability are closely linked to EQ. And as we all know, many plans tend to go off the rails due to a human impetus. Number four, you are a voracious reader. Did you just think <laughs> I eat books for breakfast? Well, we just hope you didn't mean that literally. Reading has been found to encourage a type of brain tissues growth that allows for improved communication within. The flourishing of this information leads to an increase in all three types of intelligence. Book smart, AKA crystallized intelligence, increases when reading nonfiction or a textbook. If it's fiction, following and tracking a story narrative and all of its themes and being able to apply them to the whole increases fluid intelligence. Books also provide a point of view and expression of someone else, helping you to understand other people, which boosts your emotional intelligence. Number five. You have high self-control. This trait is often demonstrated when a person is described as responsible. That person gets things done, avoids temptations, and sees the big picture. They can go against the impulsive desire for instant gratification, knowing that if they just hold off, there's a greater, long-lasting reward. Naturally, this isn't an absolute whether it be due to a medical condition that's poorly controlled or simply a one-off really rough day. We've all gotten distracted before. Overall though, if you're a person whose things that need doing get done, 
where people trust you to do what you say and to not drop the ball, it's likely that there's a solid core of willpower and self-control at play. And number six, you have a sense of humor. Do you have great comedic timing? When you tell a joke or make a witty remark, is it usually assured to land well, increasing the smiles and laughter in the room? It's no wonder that some of the best and most legendary comedians are also considered highly intelligent people. That act of ability is rare and is usually a sign of an intelligent person. This person has enough knowledge from their crystallized intelligence to create the substance of the humor, the ability to weave the tapestry of the joke with their fluid intelligence and able to read others to know what will be funny, appreciated, and not harmful with their emotional intelligence. The debate rages on regards to holistic definitions of intelligence. Some argue that intelligence is a generalized ability with a hazy feel to it, while others insist that it can be clinically measured via particular talents or skills. Some also think genetic factors have a massive impact, while others believe nurture takes the lion's share. And the fact we argue this at all is uniquely human. So how do you feel about these points? Do you see anything of them in yourself or others? As we wrap this up, we wanted to mention that there has been a huge decline in mental health around the world, which is why we're so committed to creating more content than we ever have. Thanks for being a part of our journey. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you again soon.